Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about a few things that have been happening in the crop production space within the Caribbean and also internationally. Now, before we move forward into this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed as yet. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for returning and please remember to give the video a like, right? Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about one specific development that, that is happening in the Caribbean specifically in Trinidad and Tobago, Tobago to be exact. And this development is basically a, a greenhouse, a hydroponic greenhouse farm, which is called Berry Cove Organic Farm in Tobago. Now, the Berry Cove Organic Farm, it's, it's, it's actually a, a, a new development and it's one that is, that is basically um, new to the Caribbean in terms of um, it being climate smart and I'm basically I found this information um, on Forbes.com you could go on Forbes.com right and I link the, the information um, in the description I link the website in the description you could go and have a read for yourself um, where uh, the, 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 the general manager for Berry Cove is his name is Ralph Burkhoff and they have basically um, started to develop or to build a climate smart um, greenhouse facility and as you know in the Caribbean we are prone to um, hurricane right in the hurricane season and so on we are prone to hurricanes right so they have built a structure that can withstand um, a 175 mile per hour um, wind and they will basically be growing um, like strawberries blueberries raspberries blackberries and so on right those are the crops that they'll be growing um, in my opinion this is this is this is a good uh, development uh, i think we need this within the caribbean because um, if you look most of our greenhouses um, whether they are made from galvanized um, metal or or wood um, it, it's like uh, they are prone to like destruction in terms of hurricane and so on, destroying them. Right? I have seen um, where even in Jamaica there's a we have a lot of you know wooden structures in Jamaica. We have metal ones as well, but because of how um, um, thin the metal is, it, it, it the, the hurricane can easily uh, you know destroy them, right? And with, with this greenhouse facility that is that is being built at Berry Cove in Tobago um, it's basically it basically kind of setting a different part in terms of uh, building structures within the Caribbean that we know can be more reliable I'm not saying hurricane will not destroy it but it is maybe um, more resistant basically right and 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 um, use resources better um, I don't know what the, the 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 cost is to to get these facilities up and you can basically go you can basically go to to, to facebook right and you can find berry cove um farms right um berry cove organic farm sorry um i know that uh they have they have a website berry cove they have a website but it, it is not launched as yet right but as soon as it is launched I'll, I'll I'll let you know, right? And um, and what happened to is that uh, they are now seeking um, employees, right? And I link their Facebook page in the description as well, Berry Cove Organic Farms, and and you can also find this this information on I think Loop News, right? Loop News Loop News dot com other 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 had a article on it this was basically from last year so it's not a new development it has been in the pipeline um, a good while now but they are now building right um, so I'll, I'll link this article in the description as well so let us talk about um, what is happening internationally and and one of the the the, the, the major topics out there now is wheat right and we all know the situation surrounding wheat right with the the war that is that has been happening 
we know that um, Russia is the is the um, largest exporter of wheat, right? Um, and because of what is happening, <coughs> you find that um, you know there has been a, a kind of like a reduction in that due to what is happening, right? Now, how is that affecting us um, in the Caribbean, right? So in the Caribbean, we import a lot of byproducts, right? And wheat is one of those raw material that is used to make so many things you know, biscuit um bread a lot of us like bread like myself flour wheat flour i love wheat flour and so on so you can see how oh, not having um wheat or countries that export you know wheat not having um access to that to the wheat will basically create and issues surrounding availability of these byproducts, right? And then, um, not only that, it will also cause food prices, right? Especially um, the price for wheat products, right? To, to, to kind of skyrocket as well, which is what we are facing now, right? Now, um, but how, how do we mitigate this? You know, if if you look, you 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 realize that um, a lot of a lot of of countries they are basically trying to find some kind of um, wheat substitute, right? And one of the the, the, the main um, crop they are looking at to is um, cassava, right? But in the Caribbean, we have been planting cassava a long time. So what we should do now is expand on 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 our cassava production and so on and and this is happening um all over the world as well um if you look in africa africa they basically um they they import a lot of wheat as well right and you know a lot of a lot of food there there's a, there there's always um, a food issue in africa and to and to know um not have access to to wheat you know, they definitely need to find alternative, alternatives um, to kind of substitute wheat. So there are a few articles um, on different websites that, you know, um, that you could read to get to, to find these information. Like, for example, on Bloomberg, right, on, Bloom, on Bloomberg.com, um, there's an article, um, that that is titled Africa seek Africa seeks local fix as war worsens food crisis, right? Um, yeah, because as I said before, you know, you cut off your wheat supply. You know, you need to find um, substitutes, and I link that article um, in the description as well. As I said, this one is for, as I said, this article is from Bloomberg.com, right? So another issue. Um, is is fertilizer right availability of fertilizer now we know that you know there are certain countries such as russia that that um as a large um share or percentage share in terms of um exporting fertilizer to other parts of the world you now because of the situation happening in that in that country you now you find that um you know supply of fertilizer is is, is being affected now, um, what does that mean? It means that the fertilizer that we use to fertilize our crops, it, the price will increase and you find that availability will be affected. So as you can see, um, fertilizer is used to fertilize our crops. Um, so you can see where everything ties into, into one, right? One affects the other right and the entire value chain is being affected and it's causing prices to rise and it's causing countries to basically hold on to their their resource and to, to feed their own people and to and to sustain their own economy right so that's what is happening and the final um story i want to talk about is that did you know that there was a pollinator week yeah it, it, it basically runs from june 20 to 26 right and this this is basically um and you could basically find an article to read on this um on 
agdaily.com I'll put their, their website link in the description and they basically had an article um, titled Farmers are doing their part during pollinator week so wh what is the whole aim of this? as you know that our pollinators help with our food production right without, without the pollinators um, many of our fruits that we love today would not be pollinated and um, be available for us to use right so um, basically the article talk about talks about what you can do right such as um, planting non-crop vege vegetation corridors so like on your farm um, it's like not only just planting crops that you're going to to, to to harvest plant you know some corridors or some strips that you know can encourage um, um, pollinators to 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 to, to kind of um, build build up right and be a part of, of of your farm right in terms of and and this is all this is a an effort to, to you know to increase um, pollinators population and so on so um, you know there's a lot of things that are affecting pollinators um, we know that bees bees is one of our major pollinators and there are other um, insects we have the the butterfly such as the um, and I have to touch on this too, the monarch butterfly. Right? The monarch butterfly is one of those um, species that is basically endangered right now where um, they, 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 they are not uh, finding food and their food is, is very specific which is the milkweed and that, the milkweed, milkweed is what the larva, the monarch butterfly larva feeds on, right? And due to many things the milkweed is milkweed population the plant population is being declining we find that the the milkweed um the monarch butterfly larva um they can't find food to eat so they are basically dying out right and the uh, monarch butterflies are a very important um pollinator as well so um yeah this is just to uh, you know kind of um kind of um make you aware that there is a pollinator week which has which as i said runs june 20 to 26 right so remember that and just do what you can so that is basically all that i have to talk about um in today's video um please join me again in another um, video where we'll talk about um other major developments that are, that are happening within the crop production um industry in the caribbean and internationally See you again in another video. Bye-bye.